Ms. Legalista here. Welcome to the video. Look, I have a lot to say about some of these job scams, and I've spoken about this before. Now, work from home, remote, these are some of the jobs that are more likely to try to scam you because they don't have to show up in person. They don't have to prove, you know, they're a real company that exists somewhere. It's all online. Everything's online. They can set up a website and totally look like they're legit. It's easy to get taken in by some of this online employment. They'll pitch it as an opportunity for you to stay at home, relax, and do work from a place of convenience. And the whole time this is a scam. Now, I do sort of feel like in this case, she kind of should have, I don't know, paid a little bit more. Oh, let me stop. Let me just go ahead and jump right into this so that we can see what is going on here. All right, this is quite a story. A Phoenix yeah. woman thought she'd found the perfect job working from home, making good money right off the bat. Yeah, here's the thing. She ended up losing more than $100,000 to scammers behind it. On your side, Scary Harper explains how all of this happened. Well, if you're looking for a job online, you have to be very careful because there are so many job scams out there. And the job scam you're about to see is very convincing, particularly for people who want to work from home. Letterboxd is a reputable and legitimate company based out of New Zealand. Members of Letterboxd can, among other things, rate and review films. So when Rachel got a text message from someone claiming to be a recruiter from Letterboxd, it got her attention. And the text message said, basically, are you looking for a job? We can um, give you this, this, and this per month. Okay, let's stop. And, you know, the red flags are going already. First of all, she got the text. Ask yourself when you get these texts out of the blue, did I apply for that job? Did I apply for that position? Let me go back, look through my LinkedIn applications to see if this is actually something that I sent in. That's red flag number one. So-called recruiter said she had found Rachel's resume on the popular employment website called Indeed. All right. <laughs> now, here's a problem here. We may not even be thinking about this. Here we are sharing our employment history, what we're looking for, our skills, other companies we've worked for on websites like Indeed, websites like LinkedIn, Monster Board or whatever it's called. I don't even remember anymore. This information is out there. So scammers can now go find that and then text you. So if you're thinking, well, wait, I didn't even apply for that. You get this text from a quote recruiter. You then have to vet that recruiter. Okay. You just can't take this stuff coming in as if it's the Bible, if it's the truth. And claim that Rachel could make up to $9,000 a month by simply watching movie trailers sent from Letterboxd. Who said anything that's safe? Rachel says the only requirement to get started was to deposit $100 using cryptocurrency. Okay. I don't know how many times I have said this. Other people have said this. There is no reason for you to have to pay money to get the job. Let me say that again. There is no money, no reason for you to have to pay money to get the job. The fact that she had to pay money and that it was supposed to be through cryptocurrency. Again, the alarms should just be going off for anyone. And, you know, I'm not trying to speak ill will on this person. I'm really not. But we have got to start to be a little bit more vigilant here and not so trusting. I have been there. I've totally been there and been trusting with other parties. So I get it. I totally understand. But it's a recruiter. You haven't re applied for the job. They're asking you to spend money and they're talking about you spending it via cryptocurrency. Let's see where this goes. I mean, that's four red flags for me right there. Then after watching just a few movie trailers, she would get her $100 returned plus a nice commission. For a while, it was fine. I would do the 30 movie clips and at the end, I would get my deposit back and extra money. Rachel says her new job seemed legit because she actually deposited her commission into her personal bank accounts. And I took that money and put it into my bank account. 
Like I converted it back to cash and put it in my bank account. But that's the trick. Okay. This is all a setup. It's to start you off with small amounts. $100 doesn't sound like a lot, right? Start you out with small amounts. Then they make sure that you get your money back. They make sure that you get paid. And then over time, they build it up asking for more and more, telling you, hey, you can make even more money if you deposit more money. OK, let's see what she says happens to her. Rachel was then told the more money she deposited, the higher commission she would receive. So I was like, this is great. You know, I'm going to make a lot of money here. So um, I put in three thousand. Three thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> but after making that deposit, she was told there was a glitch of some kind, which brought her balance into the negative. So Rachel was told to deposit more money so she could get out of the negative and the company could send her a set of 40 more movie clips. In what world does this make sense? This makes absolutely no sense. You're already in the negative and the company is telling you to send more money and then you'll get paid? In what world does that make sense? I want you to think about, it. just think in terms of you giving money out and just seeing that money just fly out the window, just gone. And you now think that what they're telling you is going to happen. Rachel complied by sending just over $4,400. And like she was told, she got her commission after watching those movie trailers. Yeah, okay. so I made like $1,000 within a couple of minutes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're thinking, wow, this is easy money. Yes. At this point, Rachel was unable to cash out, but... She kept making those deposits so she could keep watching those movie trailers. And Okay, easy money. There is no such thing as easy money. There just is not. Again, they're just raising the stakes a little bit higher. Now, at this point, she's 4000 in and she can't get her money back. At this point, she knows there's an issue and yet there's something setting in here. It's saying this is easy money. I'm going to keep doing this because it's easy for me to hopefully get my money back and I'm trusting them now. Easy money. Easy money is not easy. That's all I'm going to say. Increasing her commissions. In all, Rachel deposited close to $110,000. Eight transactions over the course of just one week. Her last deposit, just over $62,000. But when she was asked for even more money, she realized the so-called company she was dealing with wasn't letterboxed at all, but scammers. You were pretty comfortable with sending more money to this company, right? I said, believe them. I believe that I just need to finish the set of 40 and I'd get all my money back, all my deposits back, plus all the commissions. And it would be like a, a huge payday for me. Rachel. It would be a huge payday for her. People who are in a place where they're struggling or in a place where they're just looking for additional financial security, more money to put in their pocket, more money to save for their future, more money to have for needs that they might need to take care of with other family members, children or seniors or just other people that they need to be looking out for. This seemed like easy money. And when it seems like easy money, it's going to be a hard fall. I don't know how else to put it. I'm very sorry that this happened to her, but it just doesn't make sense from the very beginning when they're asking you to deposit money in order to start the job. Joel says this scam is very convincing and she has this message for other job seekers. I want to let people know really um, that this is out there and you know to be aware of it. Especially there's so many people looking for a job and they're very vulnerable as I was. I was very vulnerable. Now she hit on the key there. Okay. She hit on the key. She was vulnerable. She was vulnerable. And this was going to be an easy way for her to be able to make some money. Now, again, she said she's sharing this so that other people are aware of what's going on. So let's take a minute to go back through some of these tactics that took place in this particular situation. Remember, first of all, the recruiter contacted her via text. So be on the lookout for a text from recruiters that you don't know. Ask for identifying information. Set up a Zoom call 
with them. And I need to do a whole nother uh, video about somebody who reached out to me. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Set up a Zoom call, get them on camera, give them website information. Look at where their email address is coming from. Is it related to the domain name for the company that they supposedly have as this recruiter? Vet this stuff before you say yes to it. Do your research. When they tell you that you have to submit money for a job, that's a red flag right there. Just hang up the phone, block them on the phone, on text. Don't even take any more text messages from them. Yes, don't even go down this road. I don't know how else to say this. But let me talk to you a little bit about what happened to me recently with a company that tried to scam me. I had a feeling it was a scam because this I had gotten the same type of email before. Usually it's a party from a company. And if you look up the company, it will actually be a real company that exists. But they don't use a donate a domain name from that company in the email. Okay. They'll use a Gmail account and they will tell me, hey, do you handle these kinds of matters? And they'll provide some details about what those matters are and what they in particular are working on. They'll even throw out some numbers to give you the idea that what they're working on is something really significant. So the numbers will be really high, a big transaction, something that they need an attorney for in my area. And they've been online and they want to work with me. Again, just sort of them setting the stage, but I already know, okay? <laughs> I already know what's going on. And so I email back, Yes, I handle this kind of work. I'd love to set up a Zoom with you so that I can find out more details. Now, most of the time, that is not a route I go. I don't set up a Zoom call for every single person who's just emailing me out of the blue. But you know this person was not going to set for a, a Zoom, right? Other people, um, I send them a link, let them schedule a, a time for me to have a complimentary consult with them. In this case, you know, he came up with an excuse why he couldn't do a Zoom, right? He was like, well, can we talk by phone? I'm not able to do a Zoom. Given the amount of money that you're talking about, how soon you need this, what you have going on, and you're telling me you can't do a Zoom? Yes. Oh, okay. So of course, I didn't respond after that. And I have not heard back from him. I do not expect to hear back from him because he does not want to do a Zoom and get up there and have his face up there as the scammer in terms of what he is looking for. Like I said, I'm going to do a whole nother video on this, but I just wanted to go ahead and share that with you. So again, with this particular instance that happened here, she continued to put money in. Once the bleeding starts, you know, you got to you got to put a Band-Aid on that tourniquet, wrap that thing up and stop the bleeding as soon as possible. Part of the issue here is still believing that you can get that money back. It's like being in Las Vegas and saying, OK, let me try one more time. Let me try one more time. Let me try one more time and see if I can win my money back. That's essentially what's going on here. You you know, at this point, you're in trouble. You know, at this point that something's not right and you're trying to get your money back. Why? Because you're in a vulnerable position. Sometimes there's something else working there, something called greed, but usually it's people just trying to get in a better financial situation. So I really um, you know, hate that this happened to her, but again, this provides more information for us to be able to say, okay, I, you know, I don't care if the person's calling saying they found me on LinkedIn, or whatever the, the social media platform may be, I'm not falling for it. I need you to put in the comments, I'm not falling for it. All right, so don't fall for these things, all right? Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.